Hi there, this is uh, Stephen Thomas with Reports on Housing. This is the first housing debrief, episode number one. It's very uh, fluid. I'm trying to uh, put this together as quickly as we possibly can, and we'll get all the kinks out and it'll only improve over time. But uh, I'm very interested in getting out the right, the right information, the right data, the right statistics, all that. So in, in saying that, I uh, put together this series called Housing Debrief. It'll be every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 o'clock p.m. So uh, please join us. That'll be on Facebook Live. And afterwards, we'll be uploading it to YouTube and, and uh, Insta TV. So uh, that's, that's what we're going to do, at least for the time being. Uh, can't get into any more offices. Uh, offices are closed. Meetings are closed. And I, we felt that this is a great way of getting the word out there so people could have the uh, proper facts and data so they can make really good decisions to understand what's going on. Uh, I'd like to thank my uh, sponsor for, for this particular uh, first episode, episode one. It's Matt, Matterport 3D Tours. You can go to Matterport3dtours.com and they're the most effective virtual imaging available to showcase your listing remotely especially in this day, day and age, what, what's going on right now, and it'll keep your buyers, sellers, and yourself safe. So these virtual 3D tours, I mean, that's a great way of getting your home shown. And uh, they have special COVID-19 extra precautions that they're taking as well. And uh, with, with everything that's going on, they brought down their price, and it starts at uh, $299 for these 3D tours. So uh, please contact them and support our sponsor. And I uh, just wanted to start off with a couple of photos that are, that are fun. This first one was actually a local sign. I, I uh, blotted out the name, but I thought it was brilliant. Free toilet paper with purchase of a house. I've seen other sign writers that like free popcorn and things like that, but this, is, uh, this was uh, brilliant and just uh, uh, ma making a little light of uh, some of the certain uh, circumstances that, that are going on right now today. And speaking of that, we have I finally finished my panic room. I don't know if you've seen these going around, but I'm going to share some of the fun stuff that's being uh, sent my direction, just so that we can have a, little, uh, a few laughs along the way. Um, wanted to bring to everybody's attention that pretty much all grocery stores are have come up with uh, senior hours. So uh, if you're over the age of 65, you have the ability to uh, go to the supermarket without the crowds and uh, be first at the store. And uh, Gelson, Stater Brothers, and Albertsons, Bonds, and Pavilions all have their own hours. I know Gelson's and Stater Brothers is daily, and Bonds and Pavilions are both Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you contact your local store for the special hours for seniors. I think this is fantastic. If you know a senior, let them know that this is even going on. And maybe even shop for the senior as well. Um, just wanted to give a bit of my background. I've uh, been... Uh, feed my stuff to the Orange County Register since about 2004, and from that, uh, everybody's kind of borrowed and and uh, uh, reports, and I ended up on uh, TV networks, radio, also New York Times, then the Wall Street Journal, made it across the pond to the Financial Times of London when Warren Buffett sold a house in Laguna Beach a couple summers ago. So, and my PR department is made up of myself, and. Uh, my background is I'm a quantitative economics and decision sciences major. I've been in the business for 28 years, Orange County native, Capitol Valley High School grad. I have nine kids. That's right. I'm an avid runner. I used to say I run away from my kids, but now most of my kids run. And um, the, I, if you haven't guessed it, I'm a Brady Bunch family. I brought six. She brought uh, two. I adopted her. She adopted mine. And we had that guy. Bonus number two. Uh, he's two years old. He's the number nine, and he is batting cleanup. He just turned two, year, two years old uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, he's in the midst of potty training right now. So first, I wanted to give the macroeconomic outlook and compliments of Logan Motashami. Uh, I would go to him. He's got some great Facebook Live uh, pieces that he puts together on a daily basis, and he keeps it real. Uh, he's another one of those economists that keeps it real. And uh, he's all into watching the data and all the charts and stats and all that good stuff. So I would strongly encourage you to go to Facebook, Logan Motashami, and watch his Facebook lives. Uh, but the, here's all the macro charts. I borrowed this term from him. It's called BC. It's before coronavirus. All of the charts right now look extremely positive. We're just right now starting to get little blips of, of an idea of, of how deep this uh, next quarter is going to be and this next phase is going to be, and it'll probably last a few months. This is going to be 
could only be a three month recession, but it's going to be so deep that it, it is has all the the uh, markings of, of a recession. You you don't necessarily need to go two quarters out in order to have a recession. It could be just so deep and so impactful in a three month period that it basically is implied a recession. So. Uh, but we're looking at all the macro charts, the macro charts are pretty much showing how everything is really positive right now. But I want everybody to understand that the housing market is extremely strong. The fundamentals are strong. We have great down payments. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of great uh, uh, loan down, down payments as well. So people bought them by uh, all cash or they put down big down payments. They also act, had actually qualified for a loan. Gone are the days of subprime where anybody could uh, afford a loan. You actually have to prove that you can make the monthly payment. That has created a really strong foundation for housing. People are not using their houses as piggy banks either. So let's take a look at the economy. Let's take a look down the road. And um, these are the things that we will be watching carefully. Consumer confidence, employment, jobless claims, uh, regional manufacturing, uh, leading economic indicators, as well as uh, uh, seeing what Congress puts together. They've, they've just passed an $850 billion economic stimulus package, and uh, there's more of this to come. This is just the beginning of it. So expect that. There's also a 90-day grace period on taxes. That's federal. I understand with the state of California, I believe it's 60 days. I, I think you have to contact your accountant, but I think you actually have to do your taxes. You just don't have to pay up to a million dollars for the Fed for 90 days. And uh, I'll have to look more into detail on the state side of things. And uh, the Federal Reserve has stepped in and had, they're back to quantitative easing again. You know what that was? That was during the Great Recession where all of a sudden the Federal Reserve stepped in and they started making the secondary market flow again. The secondary market stopped. And that was because nobody had an appetite to buy these, uh, these loans uh, in the secondary market because what was told to them that would, they were grade A paper, subprime and pick a payment loans, they were all put into that and they were, they were ugly. And uh, as a result, nobody had an appetite to buy mortgage-backed securities. So this Federal Reserve stepped in and they, they began to uh, purchase again. Well, that's back. As of last Sunday night, they, they announced that uh, they're going to be doing uh, purchasing of mortgage-backed securities, MBSs, and they're going to continue to do that. So that will help the, uh, the flow of money because right now investors, as you can see, have been really squeamish as to where they want to park their money. And it's not necessarily mortgage-backed securities. So the Federal Reserve is stepping in. Interest rates right now are all over the place, but understand over the course of the next few weeks, those should come down to what, what are normal levels. Um, so speaking of low mortgage rate environment, that's kind of where we are right now. On a day-to-day -day basis, that's been changing. It's gone from four down to three and a half, up to three and three quarters, back up to 4%. It's all over the place. And like I said, that is because of the volatility in the market right now. But where they really should be today, based upon where the 10 year is, is probably a lot closer to three, or three and a quarter where they were or, uh, a couple weeks ago, or their record low levels. So understand that's where they should be. And, uh, and as they get more towards that, low rates is the rocket fuel that is absolutely helping in the expansion. They've helped in the expansion, it will help get us out of the, uh, this next phase with COVID-19. So why are rates so low? Rates are so low because we've actually had this downdraft since 1981. From 1981 to, to, to today, there's been, it's been falling. In 1981, we were all the way at uh, 18% interest rates and they've fallen all the way down to where they are today. We are in this low mortgage rate environment. We're here to stay. Internationally, it's a low mortgage rate environment. So it's not all of a sudden going to do an about face. We don't have a mass uh, inflation. We don't have any of the things that call for higher rates. So pretty much this environment is here to stay. And what drives the changes on a day-to-day -day basis? Pretty much this next slide, I say it's news. It's a lot of headline news. And before I used to talk about trade wars. I used to talk about uh, uh, about the Brexit and all the, all the different things, immigration, all that, but that has changed. What has taken over our headlines is just one thing, and it's coronavirus. That's it. So coronavirus, and understand, I personally have done a lot of research for the last several weeks. 
from the very beginning when this thing looked like it was going to uh, really impact our market, I started watching it extremely carefully and knew I had to do a report based upon it. So in looking at this chart, this is chart that we want to look at. If you see this, this pink line, this pink line right here is the United States. This black line is Italy. We are right on top of that black line and we all know what's happening in Italy. They have an inundation in their, in their uh, hospitals and they don't have enough beds and uh, their, uh, their rate of, of new cases is going up as well as deaths. So we don't want to follow that line. Instead, we want to follow a line similar to Korea. Korea had a big spike, but you can see South Korea, they all hunkered down, they all closed their society, and they did everything they could to, have the, uh, to maintain uh, a, a, the, the spread, keep it from spreading even more. So we're enacting a lot of those, uh, those kind of rules and regulations out there, which is why all my kids are not in school, which is why all the restaurants are closed, different things like that. That will keep it from spreading as best as we possibly can. And so, and we also want to take note as to what's going on in Japan, Singapore, and Hong Kong, because their rate has been really, uh, ha has been really curtailed quite a bit. And some of that had to do with closed borders and different policies, but it's very important that we take a look to see what the other countries and how, how, how they've responded and what the impact has been. So coron coron coronavirus, the facts, I wanted to go over them. There are 215,000 cases. This is as of uh, Wednesday. And uh, there's 83,000 people that are recovered. There's not enough that is said about the 83,000 people that are recovered. So 215,883,000 have recovered. And then we have 8,700 deaths. And the problem areas are Italy, Iran, Spain, Germany, France, and now the United States. We are a problem area. If you notice, China and South Korea are not on this list. There are 7,800 cases in the United States and there are 300 million U.S. citizens. I just put that in there for perspective. So, coronavirus and the economy. It all has to do with scale and duration. Scale and duration. How long is this going to last? Scale is how much is it going to impact the United States and duration, how long is this going to last? And as you can tell, we have the scale. Scale across the globe. In the southern hemisphere, they don't have it quite as bad. Remember, they're coming out of their, uh, their summer and just about to enter fall. So this is their hotter period in the southern hemisphere. We're in the cooler area, which is when flus and, and that, that kind of thing, uh, they, they tend to take off a little bit. So the northern hemisphere, you can see, we definitely have the scale. But I do want to point out this. This is China. As you can see, China started way out there uh, back in December. And then slowly but surely, it continued to increase until uh, this is actually where they fixed the data. And they said, oops, we made a mistake. There are a lot more than what we originally thought. And they brought them into the fold. So all these would have been over here, which would have made these higher. But you can see it's come down to where it's almost nothing. They almost have uh, no new cases in China. And then there's, uh, with that comes uh, fear. Oh, and by the way, the orange line, the orange line is the rest of the world. And as you can see, we're continuing to increase exponentially right now. But uh, hopefully this will taper and then we'll have the same hill. We'll be looking at this for other areas like United States and, uh, and Canada and, and our neighbors uh, south of us too in Mexico just to see what their, what their caseloads look like as well. And then, by the way, you touch your face 23 times every hour. And I, I, I think I do it more than that. Anyways, uh, with the coronavirus, there's a lot of fear that's wrapped around it. And then there's a lot of uncertainty, the unknown of how long this is going to last. So when all of this happens, and we have this kind of, what I term as negative news, the, there's a lot of people that start talking about the slowdown. They start talking about a recession. They start, they, they start talking about parking their money where it's safe. And what they're referring to is a safe haven. And where is the safest place for them to park their money? It's always been long-term bonds, especially United States bonds. And with that said, we have these United States bonds, and, uh, and that's like the long-term 10-year uh, treasury and 30-year treasury. I follow this all the time because this will show you what mortgage rates are doing. If you look way off to the side, that Himalaya over there, that was November of 2018 when we had 5% interest rates. Excuse me. They've come down ever since then. That was 2019. And I actually purchased a home and locked right here. The reason I purchased a home and not purchased a home but locked my loan right there is because of two things. Number one, 
Uh, Russia and the United States decided to come down, sit down uh, at the bargaining uh, table and end this trade war. That was the first thing. The second thing was Brexit. They decided not to do it in November. And they kicked the can down the road further. Those were both good news items. I knew I had to lock. They went from three and a half to three and three quarters percent and then stayed there. And then since then, they came down quite a bit. And what happened to the 10-year Treasury? Why did it come down? This is February and March. Why did they come down so far? It has everything to do with the coronavirus. So, with the coronavirus, we have uh, mortgage interest rates that are, are really low, or were really low. Now we have rates that are going up and down and up and down that can't make up their mind. I told you that has a lot to do with the, uh, the um, volatility that's out there in the marketplace. And Jerome Powell, Jerry Powell, he is head of the Federal Reserve. They reduced the uh, short-term rate. They, they reduced it by a half a point, and then they brought it all the way down to zero. They did that all last Sunday. They brought it down to zero. That does not mean you get 0% interest rates. What they're talking about, the 0%, is federal fund rate, which is short-term loans. Short-term loans is what they're talking about. They're talking about car loans and credit card debt. That is, and equity line of credits, that's what's tied to short-term uh, loans, the federal uh, discount rate that they're talking about. So understand that. There's a difference between 30-year loans, which is what we all deal with, and what the Federal Reserve has with those short-term loans. Though that, that federal funds rate uh, they, they makes a difference in this kind of thing. But for us, we need to look to the 10-year Treasury to kind of tell us where interest rates are or really should be right now. Housing, let's take a look down the road. What is it that I'm going to be specifically looking for? Well, I'm looking at supply. I'm looking at supply. I'm looking at demand. I'm looking at lower interest rates. What will happen with lower interest rates? Supply. How many homes are coming on the market? Are there fewer homeowners that are coming on the market? Demand. Is there going to be less demand out there? Are people going to be canceling escrows? What's going on with demand? Um, and then lower interest rates, which as interest rates drop, could fuel demand. So we have to look at all these, these metrics because right now we have a very low supply and we have a lot of demand and uh, we have a low interest rate environment. So it's, it's been a very hot market and we'll see where we go from here. Open houses are effective. Some say that they're still doing them. Others say I'm not doing them. Others say that they've got this special cleaning, uh, clean open house that afterwards they go through and and, and they uh, disinfect the whole entire house. So it just depends upon the, the comfort level of both the client and the agents holding those. And then there's going to be, there could be some industry shutdowns that we have to look for. What would happen if all of a sudden they stopped recording deeds? Well, we wouldn't be able to record transactions. That's not happening. I know that they've shut down the office at the office level, but they're still dealing with it electronically, these, uh, the uh, deeds to keep the flow of, of uh, our marketplace going and closing transactions. And then we'll be looking, once again, at scale and duration because all that will impact our marketplace even more. If there's too much scale and they close down things even more, we could get closings and then, and then there would be an impact uh, momentarily with uh, supply and demand and we'd have to watch all that. And duration is how long is this going to last. So the Southern California market, understand, has been extremely hot. It all has to do with supply and demand. Econ 101. So Southern California housing supply, it has been a supply problem. But it's not necessarily, and this is just one of my charts, this is Orange County, but I will be combining, I've done this for all Southern California counties, I'm going to be combining them all so that you can see. This supply problem, it doesn't change that much from year to year. There really has not been an extra supply or too little supply. What really has been the case is that demand has been extremely hot. And what happened in 2018 and 2019? Why did things slow and why were there more homes on the market? It's because we had 5% interest rates. And we found out that we were are extremely interest rate sensitive. So with higher interest rates, we have a demand problem. The demand problem is she's cute. Don't get me wrong, she is really cute, but she has expensive lemonade and we can't afford it with 5% interest rates. I'm sorry, but not in 2020, we have interest rates in the threes. And with interest rates in the threes, that has helped propel our market. 
and the active listing inventory for Southern California. And this is just a backdrop. Don't look at this. I'm going to have this fixed by Friday and I'll show you some better slides by Friday. But this is where we are. Just understand that we're at a very low. 13 days ago, we were at 28,659 homes on the market. It was down 1% in two weeks. Last year, we were at 40,991. 43%. That's 43% more homes on the market. Today, we're at 28,467. That is 0.7% less. This is typically the time of year where we're starting to increase, yet we're not increasing. We're going down right now a little bit. And this is a Southern California phenomenon with, more, with fewer homes on the market than last year. All of Southern California, and it's a major metro problem, which is why, major metro thing, which is why you hear across the, across, uh, the, the uh, United States that there's not enough homes in the market. It's because they're all in escrow. Same number of homes coming on the market just about, they're all in escrow. So Southern California housing demand has been extremely hot. And lemonade is priced uh, still a little bit higher, but we can afford it with interest rates in the threes. She's cute, long line. Demand year over year looks like this. Remember, this is just a placeholder. I'll have better slides as of Friday, but this is where we are. 13 days ago, we were at 16,800 pending sales in a 30-day period. That's what I call demand, the last 30 days worth of pending sales. And that's up 6% in two weeks. So 13 days ago, 16,800. Last year, we were at 14,781. So there's 12% fewer pending sales. Demand was down, down 12%. So we had less demand, uh, a lot more inventory last year. That's a recipe for a slower market. This year, we have less homes in, uh, that are available to purchase right now, and they're all in escrow, and demand is a lot higher. That's a hotter market. Today we're at 16,200. It's actually down 3.6%. It should be up right now, and it's not. So this is the first crack that I'm seeing in our marketplace right now. A normal change is up about 8%. So understand that. I'll be doing a lot more statistics for this on Friday. And if you look at demand uh, now compared to one year ago, there's a lot more demand and it's across the board. It's also across the United States. This is Southern California, major metros. So there's a lot more demand this year. And the expected market time, if I show you, if I blow this up for you, anything below 60 days is a hot seller's market. And this is 2012, 2013, 14 for a minute, 2015, 16, 17, 18, all in the spring markets had a hot seller's market, except for 2019. It didn't, never was a hot seller's market. It was a slight seller's market for a lot of the year. So uh, understand that that's why we did not appreciate as much last year as other years. And um, in between these two green lines is a slight seller's market. That's between 60 and 90 days. So 90 and 60 is a slight seller's market. 90 to 120 is balanced. Above 120 is a buyer's market. And 13 days ago, we were, we were at a 51-day expected market time, and SoCal last year was at an 83-day expected market time, and SoCal today is at 53 days. It should be going down, but it's going the wrong direction, and I think that, that has a lot to do with the present circumstances. So market overview is housing. We need to look down the road, and I told you, we're watching supply, demand, lower interest rates, open houses, industry shutdown, scale, and duration. We'll be looking at all this. And please go to reportsonhousing.com to subscribe. It's $15 per month or $150 per year. I will have a special section dedicated to the coronavirus. Back in the day, I had a special section devoted to distressed sales, short sales and foreclosures. But today, I'm, I'm adding a section on coronavirus so that we understand what are the nuances, what are the impacts that we're seeing specifically to the housing market. And uh, you can go to Reports on Housing, subscribe. I do have a, a, a Facebook page, Reports on Housing. I do have, uh, that once again, we were sponsored by Matterport3dtours.com. You know what? They're making a difference uh, during this uh, COVID-19 outbreak that we're having, and they have special pricing. Starts at $2.99. Uh, look them up and uh, get your homes uh, shown during this time period without people having to come to the house. And that's it. I appreciate it. So look for my next episode, episode two, this coming up Friday. And uh, it will be at 3 p.m. on Facebook Live, and I'll be recording it as well. Thank you much.